Welcome to the third international webinar of this year, organized by Vets and Clinics by Advance. My name is Alba Martos. I'm the international vet manager of Affinity Pet Care. And today I'm very happy to be here with Fernando. Good afternoon, Fernando. It's a, a pleasure to, to be Alba. here with Thanks for being here with, uh, with us. So first of all, I would like to present Fernando. Fernando is an European uh, diplomat in small animal reproduction, and nowadays he is working in San Fernando Vet Clinic in Palma de Mallorca. Uh, and there he is combining the general practice with his specialty, which is reproduction, as I said. So today uh, I invite you to take advantage to ask him anything you consider. Um, you will see that at the end of the session, we will answer all your questions. But anyway, we don't have an, enough time uh, here below in the description, uh, in, in the same YouTube page, you can see an email where you can send all your questions and Fernando will answer them. On the other hand, before starting, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, you can also download the presentation. You have the link here also in the YouTube description. So uh, clicking on, on that, you can, um, you can obtain the PPT that we will uh, show you during this webinar today. I will not delay any longer uh, and we will start the session. So as I said, uh, we, were, uh, we will talk about sterilization in dogs and cats. Uh, so Fernando, first of all, I would like to ask you, why do you consider that it's an important uh, topic to, to bring to this session and also the, the main advantages of sterilization in, in small animals? Well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Affinity to give me again the possibility of uh, discuss of uh, such an important topic uh, the, about the sterilization because all of that we are uh, sterilizing dogs and cats uh, uh, at our clinics and it, it has been classically considered that the, um, the sterilization is good for cats and dogs. However, for the last years, uh, it, there is an increasing uh, interest on the um, uh, insidious disease uh, that we can found in sterilized dogs or cats. And when you read the literature, you can feel how there are uh, preconceived ideas by the authors and also by the owners. So it's a difficult topic for that. And the problematic is uh, that the results cannot be extrapolated be between the breeds, uh, the sex, and even the, when the age of gonadectomy. So it's a difficult topic to discuss about it and to have uh, ideas. Also, uh, the relative risk, it really depends on the prevalence of disease. Um, I mean, it is not very um, important if, uh, uh, the, for example, uh, hypoadrenocorticism, uh, there is uh, an increase of uh, that uh, disease of uh, per two, because uh, how many uh, Addison disease we see in general practice, maybe one per year or maybe one every two years, uh, if the increasing uh, prevalence of that uh, is uh, the double, uh, we will not feel it. <laughs> However, uh, there are uh, mammary tumors, uh, for example, that there are uh, an increased um, prevalence when uh, in, in entire dogs. So we have to all that to keep in mind. And also, when you read the literature, uh, it is um, difficult because some papers are discussing about uh, the, the, they say early sterilization when they are prepuberal sterilization and others are early sterilization with, before the one year of age. So that difficult the interpretation of the literature. <clears throat> um, we must always keep in mind that the main objective of sterilization is to avoid un unwanted litters because that is absolutely the essential to control the population uh, around the world um, and think that it is not the same um, uh, first um, world uh, country uh, where most of the dogs are medicalized and an important part of the cats than uh, another 
country. So it really um, it's important to keep in mind uh, that that in many cases um, that for it's in, it's necessary to pay them. This uh, decision of to spay or not to spay, it's only uh, for uh, medicalized dogs uh, living um, under control. In, for example, in Spain, uh, there are uh, take uh, every year there are uh, about 100,000 dogs and 30,000 cats that are taken in kennels and shelter per year. And from where do they come from? So they come from, most of them, they come from the countryside. They, they are, are, dogs are not under control and they have litters. And then uh, many of them also, they have behavioral problems. Uh, they may be aggressive or, uh, or, or, or to have uh, some kind of uh, anxious uh, disease or something like that, that uh, go into the kennels or the shelters. All these dogs uh, would, should be sterilized. Mm -hmm. uh, then also, I, I work with breeders every day, uh, and I would like to say that irresponsible breeding, maybe breeding, maybe maybe it's possible, but uh, it's not. It's really not the typical, or it's not the, what we will find when in rescue um, kennels or shelters. Irresponsible breeding, I would say that it's. Mm, nowadays, it's on not we can we don't see it. So finally, the main problem of uh, population control is the irresponsible owner, owners. So all the dogs that uh, come from shelters or or they live or they have uh, an outdoor access should be paid um independently of the disease uh, we will talk later so the first of all is uh, the control of uh, the sexual behavior so that is absolutely important it's the main reason to to castrate a dog uh, is to eliminate the hypersexuality urine marking uh, excitement in the presence of females in estrus or uh, the hormone associated aggression between between males I find it the grooming of course uh, for the female is also important to avoid the, the the heat or unwanted reproductive behavior as bleeding estrus behavior or the pseudo pregnancy then there is a clear and known by all of us a prophylactic effect on the female genital tract Pyometra or glandulocystic hyperplasia is a hormone mediated disease. Uh, infectious is secondary and it will affect between 10 to 25 percent of the intact female dogs uh, and about 2 percent of, uh, in, of uh, non uh, spayed cats. So um, uh, it's, some, it's a disease that we will um, prevent. Uh, if we sterilize the females. For the mammary tumors, uh, 25 to 4% of intact female dogs will develop uh, mammary tumors around uh, during their life, and 50% of them that they are malignant, so are clearly the, the, we will it will, they will compromise the, their life, and um, the pre preventive effect of um, of the sterilization is absolutely sure. Um, it is said that uh, there is almost no risk if we spay them before the first hit. Then the and between the first and the second, it's said that uh, it's uh, about seven percent of uh, uh, bitches will develop uh, mammary tumors, and after the second hit. It's uh, the, the percentage, it doesn't change, uh, it's about um, 25%. However, these, uh, these, these percentages that uh, are very classical, now it, uh, they are considered not uh, updated uh, because uh, it is uh, clear that um, if you pay a beach uh, before or at, two, at the age of two years, it will have a preventive effect independently if, there, if it is the second hit or the third hit 
uh, the earlier they are stayed, the better it is. And because uh, the mammary tumors have um, benignant mammary tumors have um, receptors for progesterone and estrogens, so they, the reduction of the of the presence of that tumors will be reduced um, independently of the age of sterilization. Regarding the cats, um, it's seventy percent of the cat. 17% of the cat tumors are uh, mm, feline mammary tumors, and most of them they are malignant. So it has uh, also a preventive effect very important, especially at young age, but all, all the time it has preventive effect. Also the mammary tissue, uh, lactation, uh, about more than 60% of the females uh, dogs will have uh, lactation due to pseudo pregnancy. Um, in their lives, and it predisposed to milk retention seeds, to mastitis, and even to mammary tumors. So it's something that we will prevent with uh, sterilization. Feline fibroadenomatosis is also a normal disease uh, that will, will not appear anymore uh, if we sterilize the, the cat. And also, of course, if we remove the ovaries, there will not be any more cysts or ovarian tumors. Uh, vaginal or uterine tumors, uh, most of them, they are benignant and hormonally um, dependent, so they will not appear anymore. Vaginal hyperplasia also will not be there, there anymore um, uh, after the sterilization, and it's, uh, well, the, especially brachycephalic breeds are predisposed. And some bitches uh, will develop um, uh, urinary tract infection after the estrus, and in that cases, we will it will not appear anymore if the if they are uh, sterilized. On the male genital tract, uh, benign, benign prostatic hyperplasia. It is uh, a histological lesion that is observed in more than 90% of the dogs uh, by the age of nine years and it will uh, predispose them to prostatitis, to, cyst, uh, to prostatic cyst and prostatic abscess. However, uh, only less than 1% of these dogs will um, develop clinical signs of disease. So it is something that it's true, it's there. Uh, all the males are predisposed, but finally uh, the prostatic disease or prostatic syndrome is not so often observed. Once again, if we remove the testes, there will not be tumors anymore or uh, testicular disease, like orchipedimitis, spermatocele, testicular torsion. Mm. It's especially important to castrate the cryptorchids uh, because they have a clear increased incidence of uh, tumors and also, not only that, uh, also because the tumors that they may develop uh, in, in cryptorchidism, maybe certainly most of them is, or it's even all of them, they are sertolinomas and, and, um, or seminomas, and they have a little bit more risk of, well, or, or feminization syndrome or uh, to be uh, malignant tumors. So um, that will be um, prevented with the castration. Other advantages, um, dogs with or females uh, with uh, idiopathic epilepsy will see reduced the frequency of um, seizures uh, if they are spayed and then uh, diabetes is uh, reduced uh, with um, um, with a spaying because there is no progesterone and anymore, and uh, perianal tumors is a condition that will be healed after castration in in the males, and uh, perineal hernia is not observed or almost not observed in in or in the in castrated dogs, and it it's the castration is part of the treatment of that of that problem. Moreover, castrated dogs live longer, about 13% uh, uh, more, and sterilized female dogs live also 25% longer 
than a non-sterilized uh, female. And why? It is said that uh, the, in case of uh, the sterilized dogs have more incidence, uh, well, the cause of death, death is uh, more because of tumors or immune-mediated disease. And they see uh, this uh, reduction of the incidence of traumas, infectious disease, uh, vascular and degenerative disease. But that is more related because they are not free uh, because sterilized dogs are me medicalized dogs, most of them, and they have less access to the to outdoor, and they are more mm, treated with uh, antiparasites and whatever. Okay, thanks, uh, Fernando. So we have seen that the sterilization in dogs and cats has a huge um, uh, number of advantages, but I would like that you can you can share with us. Uh, which disadvantage it has, because I'm sure that uh, sterilization has also some, some disadvantages for dogs and cats. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, well, of course, uh, after sterilization, it's an irreversible, uh, after gonadectomy, we should say, uh, it's uh, an irreversible. So if the people is thinking that they may want to have a litter, um, let them the possibility. Don't spay them so early. <clears throat> then uh, there are some hormonal considerations. Uh, let's say that uh, a bitch has uh, the uh, is in heat every six months. Uh, then she has a diesters for about uh, two months. So it means that they are exposed to about uh, for one third of their life. They will be exposed to the sex hormone, so it's very, uh, it, it's very long. Mm? It's an important exposure to that hormone that uh, for sure they are very powerful. Uh, just a small look to the, um, to the um, uh, hormonal control of the reproductive control. Hypothalamus uh, secrete uh, generates that has an act on the pituitary gland and it secrete, who secretes, that secretes uh, uh, gonadotrophins. FSH and LH that will have an effect on the gonads secreting uh, estrogens and progesterone in females and testosterone in males. When they, when the, um, when they are gonadectomized and we remove the gonads, uh, because of the absence of the sexual hormones, uh, there is not anymore uh, the uh, negative feedback on the gonadotrophins and on the generates. That means that uh, the level of FSH and LH is very, very, very high and continues forever uh, all the life of the animal. <clears throat> and it has been observed in, in all the species uh, or in cat, dogs uh, and people that there are uh, generate FSH and LH receptors in a lot of uh, the tissues in the body, in the in the brain, in the genitourinary tract, in the in the skin, thyroid, uh, musculoskeletal system, everywhere. So it is not clear why they are there, but for sure uh, that the, if the animal has a high level of gonadotrophins forever, uh, it may it's, it it has an impact on these receptors. So obesity is the first important. It's very often we see obese dogs or cats uh, uh, sterilized. And it, in dogs, it has a prevalence of about 20 to 40 percent of them. I would say that more. Uh, females are more, female obese dogs are more frequent than male dogs. And the risk is especially important for the first two years after gonadectomy regardless of the age of sterilization. <clears throat> Why it, that happens? So because uh, there is a reduced uh, catabolism by 40 to percent to 20 to 40 percent uh, depending on the on the on the dog and especially on the breed. You know that Labradors and Bigger are clearly more uh, mm, exposed to uh, predisposed to obesity than others. And also, there is an increased appetite. Why? Because they have uh, an inhibition of the satiety. And it's pretty curious. Uh, well, leptin is uh, produced, it's a hormone produced by the fat. 
who has an effect on the secretion of uh, serotonin. Serotonin comes from the hypothesis. Uh, but obese dogs have a leptin resistance. So, and ser so if serotonin does not work well anymore, and, it, and it's the normal that between other things, it has a hypophagic effect. So obese dogs have increased appetite because of that. And also, uh, there is a call cystokinin and glucagon on, on the level of the digestive tract um, that uh, is uh, increased in uh, that dogs. So, and make them to have uh, this inhibition of satiety. And in the brain, hypothesis and also in the digestive tract there are these receptors for LH so there may be a relation because with that consequences of obesity increased sedentary lifestyle that they predisposed to joint disease cardiorespiratory disease metabolic disease and a reduced of the quality of life and life span of course um, obesity is not only because of the sterilization. There are lots of things, and I think we have to educate the, the owners to have a good uh, practice uh, to feed their animals, control their feed and good hours, etc. Et 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 then there is the post strain urinary incontinence. It's also very known for us. Uh, there is uh, in these um, uh, fem spade female dogs. Uh, have um, uh, an incompetence of the urethral sphincter that uh, it's present in three to about 20% of the females and it's mainly uh, in uh, dogs of large breed dogs or large dogs, uh, more than 20 kilo. Specially predisposed, uh, the boxes and also Doberman, Rottweiler, the ID setter, etc. In males, it's also possible, but uh, it's very rare. The big difference uh, uh, between the urinary incontinence after Spain or after castration between dogs and between males and females is that the females will should uh, appear uh, later, about uh, in three, two to three years after the sterilization, uh, um, and in males it comes uh, very Mm, short uh, time later um, after the castration. Then the joint problems, of course, they are absolutely multifactorial. It depends on the breed, on the genetics, on the activity of the dogs, if they live in indoor or outdoor, if they are overweight or not, etc. But uh, there is a presence of um, LH receptors on the cranial cruciate ligament, on the round ligament of the femur, on the femoral head. So that also makes think it's that it, there may be a predisposition on, uh, on this disease. So in general, we can um, keep in mind that sterilized dogs are predisposed to general joint problems, especially in the case of the early sterilization. Uh, regarding hyperdysplasia, male uh, in, in Labradors, it has been observed that castration does not increase the risk. However, in female Labradors, there is an increased, an increased risk of hip dysplasia when the, they are sterilized very younger. So there are differences in the, in the, ma the male and the female of the same breed. And elbow dysplasia is almost not observed, well, uh, the, uh, after that, that publication, is not observed in intact males, but the, the males uh, younger than six months old when spayed, when castrated, has a 4% of uh, incidence, and between two to eight years, a 2% of incidence. And in female dogs, is not observed, that there is not uh, uh, an effect uh, of gonadectomy, of the, um, independently of the age. So look at the difference between hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia and females and males um, of the same breed. So it's really uh, uh, variable. The cranial cruciate bruture uh, is 
Mm, well, there are some public, uh, publications saying that the sterilization increased the risk of that, particularly if the, if they are spayed or castrated after the early uh, at the, at young age, and also obesity. It says that it's predis predisposed uh, predisposed to uh, carnal crusher brutio, uh, but uh, it's not the sterilization per se. Mm -hmm. So, mm, for sure, obesity it is, but is it only for the sterilization? It's unclear for the moment. Dermatological problems, there is this puppy cow syndrome uh, publication uh, says that 20% uh, of dogs uh, has uh, that problems. It is, uh, well, uh, it's uh, when you feel that the, the, the coat of the dog becomes like uh, in a puppy uh, and it is especially observed in some breeds. Uh, I would say that the most uh, typical is the cocker. Uh, for sure you have also already seen cockers, uh, spade cockers, that the hair is not so uh, beautiful and done in entire dogs. I, I would have never said that it's 20 affects to uh, 20% of them, but it's also thing that you can see if you pay attention. Atopic dermatitis, uh, it has a, it's, uh, a lot of factors uh, variating that, uh, age, the sex, the breed, even I would say that your distribution also, because uh, here in Mallorca it's very typical and I would say that more than 2% of those they have that. Uh, but well, it has been associated with conadectomy in two of the three studies that they have uh, checked for that. And it was, there were uh, studies with uh, large populations. Immune-mediated disease, uh, well, there is uh, this uh, publication that uh, studied in uh, that in uh, 90,000 dogs. And they observed that there, there is an increased incidence of um, in a sterilized patients. In there's a risk of 1.5 to two times greater in females than in men to develop atopy, hypothyroidism, immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, and inflammatory bowel disease. The risk it was increased, but it was the same between females and males in immune-mediated hemolytic anemia and an Addison disease. And only in females, the risk was increased for lupus erythematosus. This uh, study didn't found any influence on myasthenia gravis, colitis, and pemphigus. For sure, most of these uh, diseases are uh, not frequent, but, but well, they are very grave. Mm -hmm. Other hormonal disorders. Diabetes is uh, what has been associated in about uh, in, in two of the four studies uh, that have uh, checked uh, for the effect of uh, uh, the relation of diabetes and gonadectomy. Well, it is associated with obesity also and progestogens, and um, um, it has uh, gonadectomy has a preventive effect on the females. In cats. Uh, it's uh, gonadectomy um, increase well the risk for, uh, for almost nine times uh, in sterilized cats, especially because they become overweight. Um, but then there is no relation between the age of sterilization uh, and the, uh, the the diabetes. And hypothyroidism, one study says that 41% uh, of the dogs uh, with hypothyroidism were gonadectomized. So, and that's why uh, it has been um, is, uh, found uh, an important quantity of uh, LH receptor in the thyroid. Regarding the urinary disease, uh, chronic kidney disease has been associated with gonadectomy in one of the two studies, and but urolithiasis, it has been found that three in three of four studies there's a relation with gonadectomy. For feline urinary low urinary tract disease, well, uh, uh, when the cats are sterilized in pre 
puberal, uh, they have an infantile penis and vulva. However, um, a study checked the, um, the urethral diameter in castrated cats at seven weeks and, and seven months, and it was exactly the same. So um, it has not a lot of, it, it, it seems that it has not, no, no influence. Even um, one publication says that there is less incidence of uh, fluid disease uh, in prepuberal sterilizations. Regarding the tumors is complicated, but prostatic tumors are uh, not frequent, are rare, but uh, there is a risk of a three to four um, increased uh, in castrated dogs. For the bladder and urethral tumors, mainly the transitional cell carcinomas, uh, the risk in castrated males is three to eight times bigger than in entire males. And then uh, what it has been checked the most is uh, lymphoma, mast cell tumor, uh, mangiosarcoma, and osteosarcoma. In general, we can say that uh, there is an increased risk uh, of uh, development in, uh, in, in, in sterilized dogs. But look at this uh, table. Uh, there is differences between uh, the age and between the breed, uh, because uh, uh, these are the only breeds I have found that it has been clearly studied. And for example, Labradors and German shippers didn't feel, didn't found uh, any difference uh, uh, with uh, entire or uh, gonadectomized dogs uh, for the, all the tumors. But then for Golden, Bisla, uh, uh, there, there were a difference. And also, it depends on if they are males or females, and it depends on the age of the sterilization. Something very, um, mm, well, very impressive is that osteosarcoma is the risk is double in, in, in castrated males and females. And in general, in rods, in rod, in, that is in general, I mean, in rod veilers, the risk of developing uh, osteosarcoma in non castrated um, male or females is the 8%. But if the animal is uh, castrated or gonna um, before the age of one year old, 25% of them will develop uh, uh, an osteosarcoma. There is also uh, an effect on the behavior. Uh, in fact, the behavior specialists are against, in general, they are against the, the, the sterilization um, because there is a greater degree of excitability and fear of noises if a sterilization is performed before seven months. Also in German shepherds, there's a publication uh, saying that sterilized, sterilizing them between the five to ten months are more reactive to people and animals outside the family. Also, and the most important of thing is the aggression. Uh, castrated dogs uh, are more aggressive, uh, fearful, and nervous. Obviously, we are talking about aggression out of the uh, hormonal uh, hormonal aggression, I would say. And this uh, study, Takeuchi et al., uh, says that the risk of aggression, aggressions are reduced in about 61% of uh, previously aggressive males when they are castrated, and in 53% of the aggressive female dogs, while in, um, in aggression are increased in 21% of the female dogs uh, when sterilized. So our um, um, data a bit uh, different of uh, the typical, what we always say, uh, listen, uh, that the, the Females must not be uh, aggressive. Females must not be sterilized uh, because uh, because they will be become more aggressive. So that that person says that or that team uh, says that uh, that in in 50% of the cases 
it will reduce the aggressivity. So, a bit difficult, I think. <clears throat> In cognitive dysfunction, um, it said that the progression of the cognitive dysfunction is quicker in castrated males compared to compared to entire males. But in that um, study, unfortunately, there were not uh, enough female dogs for to compare. In humans, uh, the increased level of LH is associated with uh, re, um, with less cognitive abilities. And in fact, uh, when the testosterone is low and uh, LH is increased, it is involved in the beta amyloid deposition in the brain and the preclinic stages of Alzheimer's disease in humans. So finally, what we see is uh, that um, there are a pretty a lot of uh, disease that with an insidious effect on uh, several disease, um, and most of them may be related with the presence of uh, LH receptors independently of the urinary tract with the uh, union incompetence um, in, on, the, on the joints, on, well, with, uh, on everywhere what we can talk about, there is the presence of uh, these uh, LH receptors and that uh, probably have an influence on, on, the, um, on, 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 the, on the developing of that of that disease. Thanks, uh, Fernando. So now we have a big picture about the advantages and disadvantages of civilization. So I think that now we can move to another typical question or typical issue that it's uh, which is the most appropriate technique that we can use for civilization. So uh, I don't know if you can share with us your opinion about that. Yes, of course, it's a very typical question for the young vets, or not so young, because, uh, but in fact, ovariectomy, it, in fact, is the same. Ovariectomy and ovary hysterectomy, uh, the, the aim of that is to remove the ovaries, and without the progesterone, there is no more risk of developing hormone-dependent uterine disease. So, uh, it's, it, we can say that ovary hysterectomy is unnecessary, <clears throat> unless there are uh, visible uterine lesions. So, ovariectomy, it's better than ovariectomy because it, with ovariectomy, there are more risk of complications like a bigger incision, the time of surgery is longer, there is an increased risk of uh, intraoperative bleeding, uh, and there is more postoperative discomfort. Then also um, some people perform uh, via the flank or via linea alba uh, or via linea alba. Uh, um, in my opinion, it's uh, better to increase the risk. Uh, well, uh, via the flank, there is an increased risk of seroma and the animal position needs to be changed during the surgery if we perform them by, by the flanks. So, uh, I think it's better to perform it uh, by the linea alba. The only exception is uh, cats with an extensive fibrodenomatosis that you cannot um, approach uh, by, by the linea alba and you can do it by the flank if you want. Some, I, I will not give a masterclass of, uh, of, uh, of uh, ovariectomy, of course, but just some tips um that may help to young vets um to the four limbs can be positioned uh flexed to reduce the, um, the tension of the suspensory ligament um then uh, i i love the hawk spay uh for for the cats i sometimes i use it also in dogs but especially for cats it's uh, very useful um, if there is a, a lot of tension on the um, on the ovarian pedicle, you can cut the suspensory ligament, but it's important to do it at the most distal point, just on the pillar of the diaphragm, to to because here it will not bleed. And then um, I I love the uh, Miller's ligature, and that for to perform that, we first well we put 
three clamps uh, uh, at the level of the ovarian pedicle and two others uh, on the um, uh, on the uterine tubes, more or less, um, or in the or in the at the end of the uterus. And um, well, I will show you a, a video. This we, well, we cut the ovary and. We, we remove the ovary and we place our ligature. To perform the, the lunar, the, the Miller's ligature, we give two rounds with the, with the ligature and we place it. And it's a auto um, closure ligature. We put that, we finish the, uh, our knot. And just before closing completely, we remove the first the first clamp that it's only with uh, one click, uh, just to erase the the fat, and we close the ligature. Then we do we perform two or three more knots. And with that ligature, uh, it's it's enough with only one, of course, because you have given two rounds uh, to the liga to the ovarian pedicle, and it's uh, as you told you, it's uh, an auto closure ligature. Then also you we will perform the same uh, procedure on the uterus, and that's it. You have it. Laparoscopy, it's interesting. Um, well, I think it's more interesting to, to train uh, the people than for the ovariectomy because ovariectomy can be done with a very small, very small incision, abdominal incision. But well, maybe it has a bigger interest in large and obese dogs where the surgery may be difficult. Thanks, Fernando. So uh, we have seen which is the best technique to sterilize a, a dog or a cat. But now let's move to another uh, quite usual uh, question that it's when uh, do we have to sterilize uh, a pet? So which is the best moment to do it? OK, so ideally uh, is in a, when the bitch is in an estrus, so two months after, after the last hit. <clears throat> then uh, we should uh, avoid uh, the sterilization during the estrus because of the risk of uh, of uh, lactation uh, during the pseudo pregnancy. That is more, more, more clearly more observed in female dogs than in female cats. It may be possible in female cats, but it's very rare. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, if the if the female is uh, pregnant, we, we can do it mm -hmm. because uh, the benefits of uh, not having this litter. Uh, is more important than it may, the, the possible risk that we will develop uh, lactation. <clears throat> then also during the heat, we can do it, and there is no subsequent consequences. But in bitches, there is an increased risk of uh, intraoperative bleeding, uh, not especially on the on uh, the ligature of the ovarian pedicle. But uh, I would say that more, it's more frequent that the, the uterus is uh, cut with the ligature and it bleeds. So I prefer to not to do it, but in some cases that uh, the people want to do it, uh, we can do it. Mm -hmm. In cats, it's absolutely not a problem. You can, uh, you can uh, sterilize uh, queen in heat and it's not, not a problem at all. And finally, uh, we can also perform uh, no value hysterectomy uh, at the time of uh, C-section. Uh, it has uh, absolutely no consequences on the prolactin secretion or on the lactation of the, this uh, dog or, or cat. Thanks, uh, Fernando. Related with that, uh, with, the, with the good moment to sterilize, uh, the dog or, or the cat. Uh, the next question is that if doing it before the poverty, it has uh, some benefits for, for the animals or, or not? 
Well, it has uh, because of the risk of um, of um, the the mammary tumors. It has been said that is the better the, the earlier we spay them, the better it is. In fact, there is well, of course, that is the main advantage. Uh, that advantage that uh, if there is almost zero risk of um, uh, of mammary tumors if we spay uh, uh, before the first hit. And it's very useful in to control cat colonies, and also if uh, if they have never been in heat before, the the surgery is easier. However, there are clear disadvantages. The exposure to uh, LH it will be greater because uh, it will be for all the life of the of the animal, and it has not had any effect uh, of. Um, of uh, the sex hormones to uh, on the tissue, um, then there is an increased risk of uh, joint disease, or as we previously seen as, uh, so um, in the rupture of the cranial cruciate ligament or hip dysplasia in female labradors, and there's effects on behavior, an increase in phobias and excitability and aggression in already aggressive puppies. And there is uh, because of the lack of um, of um, um, of the influence of uh, sexual hormones, there is an underdevelopment of uh, urogenital apparatus uh, that predispose bitches to uh, develop um, vaginitis, and uh, as we said, post castration in con urinary incontinence. Finally, tumors. Um, it is very variable in the rest of uh, in the most of the tumors, but for osteosarcoma, uh, there is a clear increased risk in um, in a sterilized uh, rod virus uh, under the age of one year. For the um, urinary incontinence, uh, there is a publication uh, already a bit old that it says that when uh, for the bitches that are uh, sterilized pre and before the first heat has less frequent frequency of uh, um, of uh, of uh, urinary incontinence we said that it was about 20 percent and the dogs uh, uh, was uh, in that case it was 12 percent but if they have urinary incontinence is um, more more grave, more important. A uh, more recent uh, study says that if the dog is uh, more, more than 25 kilo at uh, adult age, there is an increased risk of uh, urinary incontinence the earlier the sterilization is performed, up to one year. And there is no influence in dogs uh, under uh, 15 kilo. So we can say uh, that uh, there is a protective effect of delaying the sterilization <clears throat> because of the effect of sex hormones on, on the genital urinary tract. Okay, thanks, uh, Fernando. Let's, uh, well, let, let, let's answer another question that it's quite common, that it's if, uh, the sterilization should be combined with the with the mastectomy or not? With your experience mm. in, in in this question. Well, um, we must yes. Uh, in most of the cases, we should combine the ovariectomy to the mastectomy because uh, when a dog has uh, mammary tumors. There is uh, an increased risk if, if it's already in, if it's still intact. Uh, there, 64 percent of them will develop new mammary tumors. So uh, the difference is that if, if they are sterilized at that moment, only 36 percent of them will have mammary tumors again. And well, in that paper, said that 21 percent of the female dogs with new mammary tumors were euthanasia. So um, yes, uh, we should do it unless uh, there are, it's a tumor with clear criteria, criteria of malignancy. 
Remember that the tumors, uh, benign benignant tumors, have um, a level, an important level of uh, progesterone and estrogen receptors, while uh, malignant tumors have no this, no or almost no receptors for that hormones. So yes, we should uh, uh, do it at the same at the same time with mastectomy um, in the in intact pitches. Mm. Okay. Thanks, clear, Fernando. So. Well, now we, uh, until now we have been talking about uh, sterilization, advantages, disadvantages, the best technique. But um, I would like to ask you which medical alternatives we have to this uh, sterilization. So, uh, well, uh, I don't know. Maybe you can share with us your your experience and which alternatives we have to that. Yeah. Uh, well, traditional products, estrogens. Uh, or progestogens uh, are not recommended anymore. Maybe we should, uh, we can use in some case uh, very specific, we can use progestone, but in general we should not use estrogens or, uh, or progestogens because they increase the risk of progesterone, uh, progestogen dependent disease, uh, um, uterine and mammary disease. However, now we have uh, the, the slurinine implants that are useful. Um, in general, we can say that the efficacy lens uh, for in dogs it lends from six to six months to two years, depending, especially on the size. It's not sure, but most of the in small dogs, uh, uh, the the efficacy is longer than big dogs, and in cats it lends for about a mean of uh, 12, 11 months. But it ranges from six months to three years. So it's important to take that in, to keep that in mind. In males, uh, the superlorin, or the only that is commercialized in, in Europe, uh, is uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, but it's important to know that the dog or the cat will not be castrated until three to four weeks after the implantation and uh, personally well, I use it often uh, when the people is, um, is, is still it, it has a dot on the, on the definitive castration um, and they want to see how uh, it affects to, to the dog and especially for the hypersexual behavior then, it is. It has also a very, a very interesting. Uh, it's very interesting also for cat breeders, for the, the cats, for the males, and also for the queens. Mm -hmm. But in males, we have to say that uh, it's important to prevent that they, it may have. Uh, it may lend for three years, so that they they must keep that in mind. That the the the, the effect can be pretty far, pretty long. In the female dogs, it's not so interesting. I, I don't do it. First, because it has an initial induction of estrus, so that is interesting to induce the estrus if you want to, to, to breed them. I mean, it has an interest depending on the, on the, on the case. But of course, if we want to prevent the, est the heat, and the first thing that uh, happened to the beach uh, after the implantation is to have a heat. So it's already that it's not good. And then there is a risk of worsening some subclinical genital conditions as uh, glandulocystic hyperplasia can could develop a, 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 a pyometra. And also if there are some, there are some cases of, of ovarian cyst just after the implantation. Uh, moreover, especially for cats, if you put an implant and there is uh, an early gestation that you cannot uh, feel by the patient or, or, or with, the scene of, with the ultrasound, some cases will abort, but all of others may persist the, the pregnancy. So be careful with that. For the female cats, it's more interesting than for the um, female dogs. Mm, can be used. Also, 
Then there is also some papers for, well, about in 2010 or 12, there were some interesting on the melatonin, some interest on the melatonin administration in cats. It can be done with uh, melatonin implants and it, they are used for to induce the heat in in sheep uh, or in, yeah in sheep, uh, but in the efficacy is about one to four months. And the the good thing is that it has absolutely no effect on fertility. But um, well, mm, don't be absolute. One it's not one hundred percent of um, infertility. Or sterility. So be careful with that. It can also be given uh, by tablets. To uh, there are melatonin tablets are sold in in parapharmacia, um, and but it must be given daily, and it has also a variable effect. So I I think the melatonin had uh, an interest uh, some some years ago. But now uh, is not anymore. Thanks, Fernando. Uh, let's um, let's start the last question. So the last question is that uh, when a uh, dagonadectomy is recommended uh, in dogs and cats? Yeah, that's the, the the final question. No. So what we, what we have learned uh, during all the, that time. Or that lecture, if we have learned something. <laughs> uh, so, well, first the easy is for cats. Um, in cats, ovariectomy or gonadectomy has uh, numerous advantages and few disadvantages. So, uh, we should we must spay all the cats uh, because uh, there is almost no problems uh, with the sterilization, and it can also be done without problem the prepubertal sterilization from six to eight weeks they can be very young and they will not have problems but should we stay at six weeks i would say that in most of the cases we don't need to do it for indoor cats so medicalized cats we can wait easily to four to five or even six months without any problem to finish the vaccination to finish the deworming and to let them to grow a little uh, because it's always safer, um, the anesthesia. Maybe the anesthesia, the anesthesia, they say no, but I, I, I always feel more comfortable with, uh, with a cat, uh, adult or pretty adult, than with a cat of eight, six or eight, eight weeks. For feral cats, it's different. As soon as they can be captured, they should be sterilized. And for the limit for the mates is to to be to test to to palpate the testes, mm. and then for refugees or shelters they should be spayed uh, before the adoption if they have not been spayed before. <clears throat> for dogs, uh, it's not uh, an, an easy um, decision <clears throat> because there is not a single good option. Main, it's for male dogs. I would say that, that the main interest of uh, castration is only behavioral. In case of hyper hypersexuality, the rest of the case is not very important to castrate them. <clears throat> so I think it's better to let them intact because it will reduce the the risk of obesity and the insidious disease. For female dogs, it's the main problem is the, the mammary tumors, I would say, and also pyometra, but especially mammary tumors because they can die of a mammary tumors. Pyometra, they can also die, but it is supposed that, that we are only talking about medicalized and under control females. <clears throat> then um, there is a risk of the head and also the cost because. Uh, the first thing that uh, you, that the people, the owners told you when uh, you say that uh, you must perform a radical mastectomy of uh, one or both mammary chains and also ovariectomy, uh, they say, oh my God, I should have done it uh, when they were younger. 
uh, and it will cost me a lot. <laughs> yes, it has a cost. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have because of that they have not had uh, I don't know um, uh, joint disease or something like that that could be, be uh, horrible for the dog. But they they keep in mind the cost of that. So <clears throat> um, for to have something, I think the most interesting is. Uh, the publication of, of Heart, uh, because that guy is the, the or that the person who has uh, published the most and who has been uh, uh, shown a biggest interest in that topic. And for the breeds, uh, he has uh, published uh, the recommendation on 35 breeds. It's uh, free access uh, on internet, so you easily find it. And see that for many of them they give you a choice so it's not a clear advantage or disadvantage to to over, to spay or to gonadectomize uh, at any age but for some of them they tell you after six months after 11 months after 20 uh, after two years and it's different or pretty different or a bit different sorry uh, between the males and the females. So, for if the breed is here, um, that they are the most uh, typical breeds, uh, I think it's a good thing to have uh, that uh, table in, in mind or somewhere in the clinic to, to follow that uh, recommendation. For mixed breeds, uh, he has uh, also published another and other recommendations depending on the weight. And look at that, they're a bit different, but for uh, dogs uh, under 20 kilos, uh, he says that there is no influence, you can pay them when you want, but uh, uh, after tw more than 20 kilos, it, it, they must have at least one year in the males and um, in, for giant dogs, uh, it recommends you in males uh, to castrate after two years. And in females, uh, he says that at minimum one year old uh, after uh, or for females of more than 20 kilo. So thanks, uh, Fernando. I think that uh, we have been learning a lot during this session about sterilization. So as I said, it was uh, the last question. But I have my last request for you. It's uh, well, what I would like to ask you if you can help us to summarize the whole messages that our attendees uh, should remind about uh, sterilization in dogs and cats. So, uh, we should sterilize uh, all the non breeding cats uh, and all the uh, shelter animals and also the, the dogs with. Uh, access to outdoor for this uh, population control that is for sure then uh, talking about uh, the medically managed dogs of course there is this uh, hormone mediated disease so ovarian mammary tumors and pyometras that for sure they will be there and there is a risk of that but also there are insidious disorders as we have uh, talked about before that also can be very very important for the dog. So what can we do? Well, it's an individual um, decision, depending also in the breed, uh, in the in the sex. And something that I, we can recommend is these guides of um, published by Hart and his team. I think it's a, a good um, beginning to to have a, to have a individual decision. Then, of course, it's a still and will be always a very controversial subject with uh, ethical, health, and also economic concerns. Because population control is absolutely necessary. Uh, breeders, uh, cat breeders in general, they want the cats uh, be um, um, sterilized. Dog breeders are more um, reluctant to that, and vets, of course, vets also prefer to sterilize 
all because uh, sterilization is uh, surgery and needs money. But um, we have to keep in mind these insidious disorders uh, that can be very important for the dog. So finally, I think that although these last uh, years uh, it starts to have uh, publications and more data, we still need more um, to study more about that. So, well, I hope all that uh, it has been um, interesting and useful for you. And, well, I think if you have uh, some question or something that you can, yeah, I, I haven't uh, talked about that. So I will be really, really, really pleased to, to discuss about it. Thanks. Fernando, I think uh, it has been an amazing presentation. So, well, we have received several questions during during the session. So I encourage all, uh, all attendees just to be connected because in a few minutes we will come back and we will answer uh, these questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are uh, we are back to answer the questions that uh, we have received. Uh, before starting the questions, I will uh, remind all people that uh, when we finish the broadcast, you can download the presentation. Below on the YouTube description, you can find a link, and if you click on it, uh, you will be able to have the presentation. So, Fernando, let's start with the first question. The first mm -hmm. question. It's uh, it's about uh, vasectomy and uterine tube ligation. Um, the question is if it's they are an alternative to sterilization. Well, they are an alternative mm, to to sterilization. Yes, of course, then you will sterilize the, the the dog or the female because they will not have uh, a litter or puppies anymore. But uh, you will not uh, reduce the risk. Of, um, of mammary tumors or the, the of prostatic tumors, perineal anemias, etc. So no, I I will not uh, I think it's not uh, something that we should advise uh, to our clients. I I don't do it. So clear. Let's uh, let's see the second question. The second question that we have received is that uh, imagine that we have an all female. So uh, in this case, what is better uh, to sterilize it even it's old or uh, it's better not to sterilize and just uh, know the risk that we have. Uh, well, that this female has an apiometer, for example. Well, I, I don't recommend it uh, because if uh, it's a, a female with eight, nine year old, 10 year old, uh, she of course she may have a biometer. 10 to 25 percent of them, they have a biometer, but 75 to 95 don't have it. So no, at that age, I think I don't do it anymore unless if there is a problem, there is a biometer, so I sterilize them, or if there is a mammary tumors and I sterilize that at that moment. But I don't perform a surgery only for that in a in a, in an old dog. But okay. it's my my way to work, not. Uh... Okay, thank you. And the last question we have is that if that sterilization affects poor performance. So what do you know about that? You mean uh, sport? Yes. Um, in in theory, no, no, it does not uh, affect to that. I have uh, sterilized uh, hunting dogs uh, and they have continued to do it normally and also agility dogs and there is absolutely no problem. They continue to work without any problem. Then if they become fat or that, but most of the working dogs, they are not fat. Mm. So no, I, I think I consider it does not affect. Okay. So, well, thanks, Fernando. We are at the end of the session. Uh, thanks also to all attendees to join us during this event. Uh, well, um, just say goodbye and I hope to see you in the next webinar. Thanks very much.
Bye.